Hello, I'm Jim Kerr and welcome to Passion Highway. On this episode, we're going to be talking about how to properly dump your RV black and gray tanks. A lot of people make mistakes when dumping their black tanks. In this video, we're going to cover how you should properly do it to make sure you don't get a poop pyramid. And we don't want poop pyramids now, do we? So let's get started, shall we? You may see this display behind me and wonder what this is. Well, this is our LCI one control panel that's in our Grand Design 397TH. This panel controls all of our systems, including showing us the water levels. So I thought I would start here because one of the very important things that you need to keep in mind when uh, managing your black water tanks especially is it needs to have ample water in it in order to break down the solid waste. So we want to make sure that the black water tanks fill up to at least two thirds full before we dump them to give time for the solid waste to break down. So to check that, you go inside to your monitoring panel. Yours may look like this, but they also have the type where you push a button and it shows the little LEDs, one third, two thirds, and full. However yours is, you want to check your panel and see what's going on. So this is our panel and it's pretty straightforward. When you first open up the panel, you get to the home page and you can kind of see the tank levels, but it might be a little bit difficult to see. The easiest way is to click on devices and then go into monitor panel. And at this point, it takes you to uh, the monitoring to show you where we are right now with our uh, tank capacity. So if you get in here and look a little close, you can see that our black tank, which is our black tank number one, is uh, two thirds full. Black tank number two, we've already dumped that, so that's empty right now. Uh, we don't have any water in our fresh tank. Our generator's okay. And then finally down here, we have gray water. So it's important that you have your black tank full, like I discussed a minute ago. Uh, so the solid materials can break down, but it's also important that you have water in your gray tank because the gray tank is the final step in the process to help push the debris out of the line. So in this case, it's showing that we have about one third of our tank full. I'm going to keep filling that up so it'll be about one half to two thirds full when we actually get this process started. So now let's go back outside. One of the biggest mistakes that I see with new RVers, except for not having enough water in their black tank, is not being totally familiar with their rigs. So I'm standing in front of our uh, Nautilus system again. So let's take a closer look at it. Your system may vary. This is a grand design Nautilus system, but uh, regardless of what system you have, you're gonna have something that looks similar to this. So one of the first things that you're going to need to do when you're dumping a black tank especially is it's really better to do that in a campground and not at a dump station. It takes a long time to properly flush these black tanks, so you want to give yourself plenty of time and being in a full hookup site just makes sense. So as you can see here, we have uh, outside water connected in for fresh water and that we're in the city water setting. So this allows us to run water into the rig through sinks or whatnot to help fill up our gray tanks. So that's how you get the water into the gray tank. In the black tank, you want to make sure that you have ample water in, and like I was showing you inside, that it's two-thirds full, so it's got plenty of water and it's ready to be dumped. The best way to plan a black tank flush is to let it fill up over a couple of week period of time and fill up to about two thirds full. When you get that full, then you wanna close off your gray tanks and allow gray tank water to accumulate inside of the tanks to being at least a third, but a half to two thirds full. So that'll help with the process. And so being at a park allows you to have time to fill the tanks up and not have to worry about people waiting behind you in a dump station. And you also have reliable water because not all dump stations have clean water that you want to be running through your system. 
So you can see we're on a city water connection right now, which white valve is this way. The blue valve is straight down. The black valve is over that way. And then the two bottom, red and green, are in the up position. So yours might look a little bit differently, but uh, basically that's going to be how most RVs are set up. The main thing is to make sure that you're on city water. So as we work our way down, you're going to see every RV has fresh water fill. But not all RVs, but most RVs have this flush. And this, this is a black tank flush, and it can be confusing. And some uh, Class A motorhomes, this is plumbed in, and you can twist a knob, and it'll take the fresh water and flush it into your black tank. But what this flush valve is for is to run outside water directly into your black tank. Now, when you do this, you got to be very careful because it doesn't stop. So if you're running water into this flush, what will happen is it's filling up your black tank just like you're holding down the, the water inside. And if it overfills, it'll run out onto the roof uh, through the vents or it'll get out into your floor and make an absolute mess. Um, but almost every RV has one of these. It makes cleaning these tanks a whole heck of a lot easier. In our system, we also have an auxiliary fresh water. So what we can do here is if we want to fill that tank up, we can fill it here, uh, pressure fill it faster from city water. If we don't, uh, as we fill the regular city water through our normal fill, it will backflow. It just takes a lot longer. All right, so we have, you can see a black tank. Get around this hose here, and you can see a gray tank and you can see another gray tank. Now, you would be amazed at how many RVs are set up like this. And if you recall in the onboard display inside of our camper, it showed two black tanks and two gray tanks. It confuses a lot of people sometimes because they come up here and they might dump their black tank from here and not catch their second black tank. And in some RVs, they might have two gray tanks, but only one of the gray tank dumps is in the front. So knowing your rig is really key. So let me walk back into the back real quick, and let me show you where the dump handle is for our other black tank. Okay, now I am all the way back, 40-some feet back behind our camper, and I'm by our, our back dump. And since our camper is so long, they have a secondary dump valve that's under the toilet that's in our back bathroom. And so that's all the way back here. Now, if you go in and look here, we have, uh, hopefully you can see this, two, two valves. We have this white one and we have this black one. Now, the white one is to our fresh water tank, the ox tank that we talked about just a minute ago, if we want to dump that tank, we can pull this, and if there was any fresh water in it, it would dump out under the ground. And the other one, this black one, is actually our black tank. And you pull that, and you're able to dump the uh, black tank in the rear. Okay, this is a little bit different angle. Let's see if I can uh, show you how this works. So you can see this black tank and the cable goes up and inside of the coach. So this is a good indication that this is going to a, a tank somewhere for releasing either gray water or black water. So I know this is a black water tank because it goes right up, right below the toilet in the back, but it's a good idea to look at yours because it could also be a gray water tank. The other valve, is this guy right here and this is our dump now the easy the what fresh water dump now the easy way to look at that is you just kind of follow it along and as we follow it along you'll see a little valve that looks like that and so as we open and close that that is the process of uh, dumping the water out of the tank so if i had fresh water in our 
auxiliary water tank, this would pour that out onto the ground. Now in some RVs I've actually seen where they have a gray tank in the back and they, they have a gray tank that dumps uh, in the back somewhere. And a lot of times people forget that and then they're wondering why their sinks are backing up or something like that. And a lot of times it might just be because they have a release valve in the back of their rig that's not up where all the rest of the water stuff is. So uh, it's a good idea to just take a look around underneath your camper and see exactly what's going on and what valve goes where. For those of you that saw our conversion, the video that I did on converting our dump valves to the Wastemaster cam lock system, you might recall that I put in this uh, trap. So this trap is what is used to block to make sure that I don't inadvertently uh, let water spill out of the hose. So I've installed this, it's called a Valterra valve, and when it's pushed in, it's holding back all the water and waste inside of our camper. Now it's possible that you have something similar to this. If you don't, you might want to install one. I'll link to the video below that shows how I installed this system in case you're interested. Uh, but it's converting the Waste Master product. And what's great about this product is that it doesn't leak. So I don't have gloves. I don't need gloves right now. Everything is sealed up and ready to go. So I don't have to worry about having leaks on our camper. So if you have leaks in your camper, you might want to check that video out and take a look at how this installs. It's actually relatively straightforward. But the key thing to keep in mind here is that this is closed in the closed position now. And the reason I have that closed is because I'm holding gray water up into our tank so I can flush in a little bit. And it also allows me to have an emergency shut off if for some reason the valves fail and I'm having a, an, some sort of a leak emergency, I can push this down here. Sometimes it's easier to get to this and it stops it right here versus a valve that's all the way up by the tank that shuts off and then it still has to empty the whole rest of the line before it actually stops flowing. When you, when you kill it here, it just has this one little section, whatever's in the hose, and it stops it immediately. Okay, I thought I would do a little demo just to give you an idea of what it looks like when water is flowing out. This is just fresh water. We haven't started uh, dumping our a black tank yet, just some residual I had trapped in the line. But all I do is pull this valve open and you can see how the water flows through. So this lets us take a look and see uh, what's going on in our lines and if there's anything in there um, that might be clogging things up. And you want to know that before you disconnect and end up uh, having yourself a big mess. Now's the time to get your gloves. So we're gonna start uh, connecting things up and we wanna make sure that we have our gloves on. So you should have had these on if you uh, were connecting up your, your line, but I didn't have to do that. Now I, have, I am ready to start connecting things up and running a flow. You wanna make sure to protect yourself. I would hope it would almost go without saying that before you dump anything you need to make sure that your waste lines are connected so you connect up to the main dump valve if you have a secondary one like we do in the back and you're dumping that tank you need to have that line connected and you just make sure that you run the flow in kind of a downward direction so it flows toward the actual uh, waste hole so you just uh, connect everything together and make sure that it's a nice tight seam. It's always a great idea if you're connecting or unconnecting these to be wearing gloves in case uh, there's an accident or dirt around the um, waste hole. But you just make sure that everything is connected up properly and that you don't see any leaks and you have a nice flow in the downward direction away from the valve. Okay, you can see I have this orange hose. This is a hose that I use that's specifically only used for uh, black tank water. You can see in the background here, I have this blue hose. This is our drinking water hose. 
uh, have this orange. This orange hose is a Camco hose. I'll put a link down in the description below. But I use these to uh, do the flush. So if you remember just a second ago, I had this, um, this valve here that we use to flush the black tank. So when we're getting ready to drain the tank, we want to also do a nice good flush with clean water. So to do that, I have these little quick connect valves and I just take this hose, I put it on this end, and then now it's connected. It makes it easy to just connect and reconnect. Okay, now I'm on the other end of the hose and this is the uh, male end of the quick disconnect. And I have this Y adapter that I always keep on our hose. So on this side, I use this for draining the uh, or, uh, black tanks or washing water on the outside. And on the other side, I use for fresh water. So all you have to do is take this other end and using this quick disconnect or connector, it puts it in nice and securely. I'm not quite ready to turn it on just yet because we're not ready to flush, but I like getting all this stuff set up to make it easier to uh, flush when we are ready. Okay, now the fun begins. We're ready to dump our black tank. And you can see here it says black tank. So this is the tank we always want to dump first. We want to leave our gray tanks closed and we want to make sure that they have water built in them because we're going to need those in a little bit. And you don't want to have your gray tanks open when you dump your black tank. And the reason is, is that when the black tank starts flowing out, it could actually backflow into your gray tanks if they are open. So you always wanna make sure that these are closed before ever opening up your black tank. And then on the other end, I have that valve open. So uh, over by the hose that we just reviewed. So what'll happen is that as soon as I pull this, black water waste should start flowing out of the hose. So let's do it. Okay, so now, now we're on the uh, fun end of the drain and you can see the black water and you can definitely tell it's black icky water. Sorry about the uh, yuck here. Um, broken down toilet paper and whatnot is smoothly flowing out of the line and that's exactly what we should see. Another thing you might want to just take a look at is that there's not a drip. Not one solitary drip of water coming out of this. It's nice and clean uh, and that's really the way we want it. That's why we changed to this waste master hose system because it just makes life so much better not having to worry about um, accidental leaks. So we'll just give this a couple of minutes to drain and we'll be right back. Well, we're back on the business end of the dump and you can see that the water has stopped flowing. So we have dumped our black tank. So next we need to close off the tank and start the process of filling water into the tank. We want to do this a few times to make sure that all of the inside of the tank is as clean as possible. Okay, now I'm on the water end and I have my valve on here and we have pressure. Now you might also notice here is that I also have a one of these little step down regulators. So some parks have high pressure. This park here runs right around 75 to 80 PSI in the lines. You don't want to have to pump that much water pressure into any of your lines inside of the rig. So what I did to protect us is I have a step down regulator that'll take any kind of incoming pressure and drop it down to about 50 PSI. It's always a good idea to do that before connecting any water source to your outside rig. On the um, other side, I have a dial that I use for our main water pressure, but for dumping and whatnot, I just use this uh, 50 
PSI reducer. And we just go in and turn on this valve slowly. You can hear, maybe hear the water coming in. And then I just gradually open it up and let the hose fill up until it's all the way open. And then I just make sure that we don't have any leaks. Okay, see that the water is running through clean, don't have any leaks, and it's going into the black tank. So what we want to do is monitor this very closely. You never, ever, ever want to walk away with water running into your black tank because it can cause a big mess. Now on our rig, we have, I think it's a 42 gallon black tank. So if I run water uh, into an empty tank for 10 minutes, that gets me to about halfway to two thirds way full. And if I run it to just about 15 minutes, that gets me all the way to full. So I always start a timer just as a reminder, but I, again, I never ever let this run without staying right close to the rig. So if anything is happens, I'm able to quickly shut off the water. So let's give this a few minutes and we'll be right back. I am inside watching our monitor panel and you can see that the black tank right now is reporting that it's one third full because we're adding water into the tank. And uh, the gray tank still has water in it. So everything is looking good so far. So now we just want to watch this until the black tank gets to be about two thirds to all the way full. Okay, we can see that we just stepped up from one third to two thirds. Now these sensors inside of the RVs are not really super accurate. So the first third really is right at the bottom of the tank. So as soon as water starts filling in, the first third will come on. As it fills up to actually truly about the first third, then that's when you see the little flashing as it starts touching the second third. And then it's gonna keep filling up to where it's actually two thirds full. And then when we get to two thirds full, we'll see this uh, bar kind of flash and go to full. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's full, that just means that it's greater than two thirds full. So that's pretty much what we need to wait for when we, we start to see this bar flickering to where it's starting to go full. Then we know that we're at two thirds full officially and that's usually a good point to go ahead and do the final flush. Okay, we just crossed into the uh, full section, which again means that we're past two thirds full and we're going into the final fill. So this is usually about where you want to start thinking about dumping your black tank if you are ready to dump, or at least when you know that you have the two thirds full that you're good to go. So now that we are at this point of being full, it's time to go outside and turn off the water. And slowly turn off the water and that stops the flow of water going into the tank. Okay, we might be a deja vu. So we dumped the black tank once with the actual black water in it when it was two thirds full. Then we closed the tank and we filled it with fresh clean water through the fill valve. And now we've shut that off and the tank is indicating two thirds to full. So now all we do is just like we did before, is we go ahead and pull the drain and we let the fresh water drain out. Okay, I'm back at the business end again and you can see, so see how dirty that water is? So although we did flush the tank, there's still a lot of extra debris that's in there and so what this flush does is it helps wash that tank out. It gets water all the way up in and it splashes around at 50 PSI. And it gets a nice fast flow coming out and it helps clean the sidewalls and the bottom of the tank. So what we do is we just let this thing go. And then after we're done with this flush, 
I usually do this at least twice. Now, if I'm getting ready to winterize where I want it to be absolutely as spotless as possible, I'll flush this three, four, five times while I'm prepping the rig for winterization, just to make sure that our tanks are completely clear. So I'll give this a few minutes and then we'll be right back. I'm now on the second flush. And as you can see, the water looks a little cleaner than it did the first flush, and certainly cleaner than we, when we just dumped the black tank only. But it's not quite all the way clean. So it's always a good idea. I usually flush the tank uh, two full flushes. Since this is the second one, it's acceptable. And we could uh, fill up from here. Uh, but if we really want to get it clean, it's a good idea to do a third or maybe even a fourth flush. I like seeing the water come out completely clear after the flushes uh, when we're getting ready to winterize because it, it helps keep the smells down from inside of the rig if the black tanks are completely clean. So I'm going to do one more flush. Okay, so now we are on the third flush. And you can definitely tell that the water is cleaner this time around, but it's still not spotless, but it's pretty good. So by three flushes, you can get the tank pretty doggone clean. Now the thing is, is that three flushes, each one is 15 minutes. It can take quite a while. This is why you want to be in an RV park. So you have time to flush and fill the tanks. You don't have people waiting on you and you can just take whatever time you need. But you can see now this water is a lot cleaner. And this is what we want to look for, is to make sure that this water is nice and clean. Okay, now that we've dumped our black tank, the next thing we need to do is to release that gray water we've been holding. And that will run the soapy water through the lines and help further clean out all of your hoses and lines from debris. You want to try to keep these lines as clean as you possibly can so you don't have to worry about buildup. When debris sticks on the hoses and tanks, it will eventually bond itself to those tanks and it makes it very difficult to get off. So if you flush your tanks regularly and you make sure to follow a process like this, you're going to be way more likely to keep your black tank especially running for years and years. So now let's go ahead and flush our gray tanks. Before flushing the gray tank, we need to make sure that our black tank is closed. So since the gray water would be higher than the black tank, if we were to release the gray tank before closing the black tank, what would happen is that water could backfill up into the black tank. Now our tank is pretty clean right now, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we were to do that, but it's always a good practice that whenever you have your gray tank open, your black tank should be closed. If you're gonna dump your black tank, you want to make sure that your gray tanks are closed so you don't inadvertently cross-contaminate your lines because they're very, very difficult to clean if you end up getting black tank debris into your gray tank, it can create smells inside of your rig that are almost impossible to get rid of. So let's go ahead and close our black tank. And now we know that that's completely closed and secure. Now we're ready to dump our gray tanks. I usually start with the number two gray tank. And the way that you know which is which is they usually do these in order. So the tank to the far left, if you have two gray tanks, so the tank over here to the left is usually tank number one, and then to the right is tank number two. If you were to have these vertically, so from top to bottom coming down, the topmost would be tank one, then tank number two, and tank number three, and so forth. So in this case, let's go ahead and dump our tank number two. So all I have to do is pull that open and let the water run out. As soon as the water is complete, we'll pull tank number one. Okay, we're back now, and the tank number two has been drained. 
So we can go ahead and close that back up. And now we want to go and pull our tank and let that flush out the lines. Now I'm doing these in order. Technically you could have both of the gray tanks open at the same time, but it's always a good idea to just do one or another when you're doing the flush of your black tank. Okay, this is our gray water. And you can see it's a lot cleaner, a little soapy. This, it kind of helps put some lubricants and soap into the lines and helps flush out anything that might actually be in there. So this gray tank is emptying out. We'll let her go ahead and empty. And then at that point, we will have a completely empty system. Uh, the black tank is empty from its flushes. The rear gray tank number two is empty. And as soon as this one finishes up, we're going to have gray tank number one completely empty. So at that point, the entire rig would be dry. I know after this long video, you're probably thinking, come on, are we done yet? And we're almost done, but not quite. We've got one more step. And for this step, I'm actually in our master bathroom. If you remember when we first started this video, it's always important that there's ample water in the black tank to help break up the solids so they go into suspension into water. So we can't just use the toilet now that it's completely dry because the, the, the solids, the poop as it were, would actually start building up and create a pile that they call a poop pyramid. And if that is allowed to dry, it'll actually dry out and create like almost like a concrete structure that's nearly indestructible. So it's important that water always covers the bottom of the tank and is above the level of any solids that might be flushed. So to make sure that we do that, we need to add some water into the tank and know exactly where we are. So usually what I do is I start out with something uh, like two to three gallons of fresh water then I add in this product called Happy Camper. And you add one scoop of this Happy Camper per one gallon of water. What it does is it creates a process that helps break down solids. So the idea is to always have sufficient chemicals in your toilet to be able to help accelerate the breakdown of toilet paper and poop and whatnot that's in there. And so to do that, I'll add two to three gallons of fresh water that coats the bottom of the tank. We have a 42 gallon tank. And then from there, then I'll add two gallons, sometimes three gallons of happy camper, depending on how we're gonna be camping. So if we're gonna be camping at a campground and not really moving around a lot, I will actually put in a little bit more of the happy camper uh, because the, the sloshing around isn't happening and more, more chemicals will help break it down. Uh, if we're going to be extending for long periods, like uh, out dry camping for a couple of weeks without draining our tanks, kind of the same sort of thing, add two to three gallons of happy camper on top of two to three gallons of fresh water. We'll keep the water level high enough to make sure that the solids are always submerged. And then when you flush the toilet, it's important to use ample water. Um, these are unlike your normal home toilets that flush and they have a consistent rate of flow that just fills up and you don't have to think about it. RV toilets are designed to be user managed. So when you press the foot pedal, it lets water in. As soon as you let it go, it stops. So a lot of people are trying to conserve water so they flush real quick and they let it go. The solids drop into the tank, but then the solids are not submerged in water. It creates that poop pyramid, and then the top part of it starts to dry out, and you create a mess. So the place that you do not want to conserve water is the toilet. You want to try to conserve water when you're dry camping in your sinks and in your showers, washing dishes, those sorts of things. But the place you do not want to skimp on water is your toilets because it can create incredible amounts of damage that are hard to fix. When that solid dries up, it is literally a brick-like material that bonds itself 
to the sides of the tank and then it's just very difficult to break out. You either have to take your toilet out or go down through and try to break it up somehow. It's just not something that you want to do. To solve that problem, all you need to do is to make sure that you have more water in the tank than you have solids, so the solids are always covered up, and you use a really good chemical like this uh, Happy Camper. I'll put a link to this uh, down below that'll go to Amazon, so you'll have an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, but it's inexpensive and will save you a lot of problems in the future. Okay. okay, I'm at the toilet and you're probably wondering, so how the heck do you know how many gallons of water you're putting in through the toilet? And it's actually pretty simple. Uh, they thought of everything. This, this ring right at the top of the bowl, so not all the way up at the top, but just this middle ring, and this is a clean toilet, so uh, don't worry too much about that. This section right here, if you fill the water up to about that level, that's going to be one gallon. So all you have to do is go in and push the hand, the, the little foot level or lever uh, just partially down and you'll see the water filling up. If you were to go all the way down, see it would flush. So you have to just very gently let uh, put enough pressure on the on the toilet handle, the flush handle, to allow water to come out without it opening this valve and letting the water out. So what I do is I just go and you just fill the water up and you'll see as it's filling up it's going to get to to this top level and when it gets to about right here this is going to be about one gallon of water. So then all you have to do is press the hand all the way down, it flushes, release it for a second, and then fill it up again. And you have to be careful about how you push this, this down, because if you push it down too far, it'll flush. You just have to do just a little bit until you hear the water coming out. And then that'll keep the uh, bottom valve closed. And then you just fill it up and let it go. And as soon as it gets up to about the top of that ring, then we know that we're at one gallon. So now when I flush this and let it go, now we have two gallons are in the black water tank. So now we'll fill this up one more time. And you saw there when I started pressing it, I was a little bit too hard and it opened up the valve. So I just release it and then you just start very gently start the water flow again. Um, this is one of those things you just can't rush. It just has its own pace and any more than that, you're just running water into the tank directly. And it's really best to be able to measure exactly how much water is going in. So as soon as I get this full, it's time to put in some of the Happy Camper. Okay, so I'm at a gallon, so let's now get the Happy Camper. Okay, so the Happy Camper, it comes with this little scoop that's a appropriate size. This size scoop is equivalent to one gallon of water. And you don't want to put more of this chemical into the toilet than you have water because what it will do is it will cake up. It needs to be able to dissolve in the water. That's why I add a couple of gallons of water, fresh water up front before I put this in. This allows this uh, powder to dissolve in the water evenly. So all you have to do is go over to the toilet again and then just very gently just kind of sprinkle it in. You want it, you don't want it to cake up on the walls of the toilet. So I just very gently just let that break up and into the toilet. I give it a second or so to dissolve and then you just flush it. And you want to flush it as fast as possible because that drop of this chemical into the water that's already in the black water tank will help dissolve that uh, material even more efficiently. So now we do the exact same thing again. We just fill up the tank 
with water just patiently. And then as it fills up, as soon as we get it full, then the next thing is to put the second batch of Happy Camper into the water. Okay, this is our second batch. Just, you don't want it to dump because it'll clump and stick to the side of the toilet. So, so it's just good to just kind of sprinkle it a little bit so it covers uh, the water and it's in it starts breaking down in the water versus uh, sticking to the side. So now that I have that happy camper in, again, I just let it set for a second and it allows that chemical to dissolve into the water. And then we flush. And now after we've flushed, we have the chemicals that we need. So we have two gallons of fresh water, two gallons of happy camper, and we're good to go. So I hope this video helps you out. Again, we have a blog post that it covers this in more detail with pictures and descriptions of exactly why things are done the way that they are. If you want to read more about that, go to our website. It's passionhighway.com slash dump, D-U-M-P. And that'll take you to our blog article that has photos and better descriptions. If you like this content, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel so that way you're notified when we post new content. And also click the like button. Liking this content really helps us out. It helps let YouTube know that what we're doing is important and that people care. And that motivates us to keep creating this kind of content for you. So please like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions about any of this, uh, post a comment below. I'll do a, my best to respond to those comments as quickly as possible. And again, my name is Jim Kerr, and thank you for visiting Passion Highway. <music>